Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about utility libraries in Flutter. The three that we're going to focus on in this tutorial are the battery, connectivity, and the device info plugin. Before we get to that though, let's take a look at the Flutter Fire GitHub repository. In here you can see there are quite a few different plugins. Some of them we've looked at and some of them we will probably never look at. There are a few to note. For instance, there is this sensors library. This allows you to gain access to accelerometer events and gyroscope events. Now the reason why I'd rather not demo this library is because it would be difficult to show the actual effects of it inside of our emulator. The same goes for this local auth library. This gives you an API that allows you to gain access to things like a fingerprint scanner or any kind of password or pin code that you have on an Android or iOS device. And you can use those things to essentially authenticate a user inside of an application. It can be pretty difficult to demonstrate this as well. The next one is our camera plugin. This gives us access to the camera on our device. Again, it's not really something that you can really show off with an emulator. And we also have the image picker plugin, which is similar to the camera plugin because it gives you access to the camera and allows you to manage images that come from your camera inside of your application. I do recommend you guys go over and look at all of these different plugins. These are all built by the Flutter team and they can all be pretty useful for various different things. As mentioned before, we're going to be looking at battery, connectivity, and device info. Battery and device info are currently at version 0.2.0, and connectivity is at version 0.3.0. So those are the versions that I will be using for this video. I've got a little bit of boilerplate already in this application. All we've really got is a stateless widget that creates a material application pointing towards a stateful widget, which creates an empty scaffold. Let's make our imports for this application. So we're going to need battery, connectivity, and device info. And the names of these packages are what you would expect. So connectivity is just connectivity, connectivity.dart. Battery is just battery, battery.dart. And device info is device info, device info.dart. We're also going to need Dart Async and Dart IO. The reason we want Dart Async is because all of these plugins are centered around platform messages, which as I mentioned in a earlier tutorial, are all asynchronous. So for instance, with our battery plugin, we're gaining access to the battery status of the device. And we do this by asking the platform, which is either Android or iOS, and that platform is what sends back this information for us. So speaking of battery, let's start with that plugin. Down here in our stateful widget, we can create two global variables. One is a battery object and the other one is the battery state. We can also make a third one, which will be the stream subscription that we use to actually stream the platform messages to our flutter layer. And I'll just call this bat sub. We can set this up inside of our init state function by calling on our battery object and then calling on the on battery state changed property. And on that we can attach a listener and the callback function for this listener returns a battery state. And what we can do is just take that battery state and push it into our global battery state inside of a set state function. So every single time our battery state changes inside of our application, it will then update our state and update our battery state. We can also override the dispose function and take our bat sub stream subscription and run the cancel method on it so that it properly closes when we close this widget. Now down inside of our build function, we can build out this scaffold a bit. So we put in an app bar that just says Flutter Utils, and then the body is just the center with a column in it, and our column has a text widget inside of it, where we're just saying battery, and then we're taking our battery state and converting it into a string using string interpolation. 
So here's our current application and obviously our battery is just going to show battery state full because this is on a emulator where the battery doesn't actually change. However, on a real device, this utility can be pretty useful. You could use it to sort of shut off some certain parts of your application. If maybe you don't want to drain your user's battery, you could use it to create some kind of battery gauge if that's what you were trying to build. And there are various other projects that you could use this utility for. Our next plugin, which is our connectivity plugin, has a little bit more application in more general applications. So this is a plugin that allows us to interface with the platform and gain access to the state of our connection. We can check to see if the device is connected to Wi-Fi. We can check to see if it's running on 3G or 4G, or if it has no service, if it's running on 2G and so on and so forth. This becomes extremely useful because we do not want our applications to needlessly drain data. So here we can create three global variables, a connectivity result, a connectivity, which will be a connectivity object, and then another stream subscription with a connectivity result inside of it. And like with our stream subscription with the battery state inside of it, this is how we're going to get access to the connectivity result from the platform. Unlike with the battery, let's create a function called init platform. This will return a null wrapped inside of a future and it will be asynchronous. We'll start by defining a connectivity result, which we'll call result. Inside of this function, we can create a try catch block. And inside of our try block, we can say result equals await connectivity dot check connectivity. So if this fails, then it will then throw an exception and we can catch that exception in our catch block. And we'll just print out the exception as a string. So we'll use the two string method on it. We also want to take our result and turn it into null if it fails. This way we know it failed. Below our try catch block, we want to create an if not mounted statement. This statement checks to see if the state object that we're working in is mounted in our widget tree or not. And if it's not, then we want to just automatically return out of this function. If it is, then we want to keep going. And then down below it, we can call our set state function and we can take our connection status and set it equal to the result that we got. Now this statement is pretty important because if we're not mounted and we try to run the set state function, it's obviously going to cause a bunch of problems. So we check to see if this state and the widget is mounted on the tree properly before we run this set state function. And that further eliminates the potential for an error here. This function is an asynchronous function that will be run when our widget is first rendered inside of our tree. So there is a moment in time there where perhaps our connectivity comes back quicker than we expected, or maybe it comes back later than we expected, and the widget isn't fully rendered, and it could potentially cause issues. Up inside of init state, we can now call to our init platform function. And like with our battery, we can create a listener to check to see if our connection has changed. So we take our con sub, which is our stream subscription with our connectivity result inside of it, set it equal to connectivity dot on connectivity changed. And then we want to listen for a connectivity result and have this callback function. And in here we can just take our connection status and set it equal to our result. Down inside of our build function, we can add another text box. And in here, we can put in our connection status. So we just say connection state, and then we put in connection status with string interpolation. And now if we reload our application, you'll see that we still have our battery. And now we also have our connection state, which is showing us connectivity result dot Wi-Fi. And if we come up here and we turn off the Wi-Fi, it now returns connectivity result dot none. 
And obviously it shows us none, even though it's showing us that we are connected to some kind of cellular service. But that's simply because the emulator doesn't actually pick up on any kind of cellular service. So let's turn back on our Wi-Fi, and now it, of course, returns to connectivityresult.wi-fi. I also forgot to put our consub.cancel inside of our dispose function. Now I'm sure some of you are already thinking of some pretty cool applications for the connectivity plugin. It can be pretty useful, like for instance, if you have a application that pulls a lot from an API and maybe you have a lot of photographs. If say you find that the phone is now not connected to Wi-Fi, maybe you want to cache those photographs. And in this way, you're not reusing a lot of data. And of course, then your user doesn't have to worry about the application being data heavy. So that's just one of many examples for this type of plugin. Okay, so now let's look at our final plugin. For the device info plugin, we want to have three global variables. This time, however, we will not have a stream subscription like we did with the other two. Instead, we're just going to create a device info object, and then we're going to create two variables, one for the Android device info, and the other one for the iOS device info. Obviously, because the device info shouldn't change, we don't really need some kind of stream to listen to see if there are any changes. So that's why we're not creating a stream subscription this time. Let's come back down to our init platform function and we'll create an Android device info and an iOS device info variable. And we'll call this a info and i info respectively. Then inside of our try block, we can have this if else if statement and we can check to see what our platform type is. Now this is why we brought in the Dart IO library. This gives us access to this platform object. And the platform object has platforms like Linux, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even Fuchsia. And because we have two different device info variable types, and because iOS and Android are vastly different, we do kind of want to differentiate in this case. So if our platform is Android, then we take our A info and we set it equal to await device info plugin Android info. And if our platform is iOS, then we set I info equal to await device info plugin dot iOS info. And this will give us access to two different objects. Each has their own set of properties that we can gain access to. Now the rest of our function is fine, except for down in our set state function, where we can take our a info and i info and put them into our global variables. So down here we can say Android device info equals a info and then iOS device info equals i info. Down inside of our column, we can now create a bunch of new text fields. So I'll create one for device ID, and in here I'll just put in the Android device info dot ID. Then we have our device fingerprint, which is Android device info dot fingerprint, and then the model and the brand, which is Android device info dot model and Android device info dot brand, respectively. You can see that there are actually quite a few more properties that we can gain access to. You can look at the version, the type, the tags and a bunch of more technical things. And here's what our application currently looks like. So we have a device ID. This is the device ID for our emulator. And then we have our device fingerprint, which you can see it says Android, and then it says virtual box because this is inside of a virtual box machine. And then the model for our device is just going to say Google because it doesn't have a specific model even though this is a Google Nexus 6P image. And then the brand will say Android, again, because it's an emulator and yeah, it's not working properly for the emulator. If you were to run this on a physical device though, you would get back the actual information of that physical device. 
This information could be pretty useful if you wanted to limit the types of devices that would have access to your application. Maybe your application has pretty hefty graphics or maybe it has very specific functionality that some phones just simply don't have. You could check to see what type of phone that your user is using and then of course tell them hey yeah you don't have this or you don't have that so you can't use this application. Alright guys well that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just liked it then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.